Hey Angular devs, so in this video, I'm going to show you how to add loading indicators in your Angular Material app using the example of my dashboard here. So we're going to cover three levels. So the first level is the global indicator. And for my dashboard, I thought it would be best to have a progress bar at the top here somewhere like this. If we switch to slow 4G so that we can actually see that, you can see that there is a nice load indicator here at the top, which is going to show the user that, okay, something is loading. And you can see that it also works on navigations. So when lazy loaded routes are loaded, it's going to cover that part as well. Okay. So this is your global loader and this can be enough for most use cases. But there are also some other use cases. For example, you can add a simple loading spinner in my widgets as well when you're fetching data from a server to show this graph or other data points. So that's sort of a local loading indicator. And for that purpose, we are going to create a sort of a reusable container component, which we can plug in anywhere that we want to use that loader. Okay. An example of that is also in the button. So for example, on this login page, you can see that we don't have the global loading indicator yet. So we can, when we click on it, you're going to see that there is a local loading indicator along with obviously the button being disabled, which gives the user a nice feel of whether the app is working or not. So watch till the end because I'm going to cover all of these three levels of loading indicator and we're going to create a nice reusable component till the end. Okay, so let's get started. So the first thing we need to consider is where to actually store the state for um, our loading indicator, which in our case, the first thing will be the global loading indicator at the top here. Okay, so this will be an app wide indicator. So this needs to be in some service which is provided in the root or you can also keep it in a store. Now, as it happens in my Angular dashboard, I already have NGRX signal store integrated and I already have an app store which is used to represent app wide state. So for example, we have the user here and we have the login and the logout functions here because it pertains to the whole app. So we can very easily add the loading state here. And so let's start with doing that. So for the first thing we're going to do is in the app state, we're going to add loading boolean here. Okay. And in the initial state, we are going to add loading false here. Great. And then all we have to do here is to add two methods that we can use to start and stop the loader. So let's do start loader start loading here and then stop loading. So start loading is going to patch the store with the loading true value and stop loading is going to patch the store with the loading false value. And with NGRX signal store, it's really simple. So as soon as you declare a state here, you can access that state in the form of a signal wherever we are injecting the store. And in this case, because our store is provided in the root, this means that it can be injected anywhere in your app because it's going to be available throughout your app. Okay, great. But we also want to add the loading handling to the login function. We can actually just do patch state and store loading true here. And then in the finally, which we want, because finally is basically covered for the success and the error cases both. So we want to do this loading false in the finally block here. Okay, great. So this is all we need to add the state for our uh, loading indicator. So now we need to add our mat progress bar as we discussed at the top here, somewhere around here. And we need to link it up with our loading state here. So let's go in our layout component. Now this layout component contains our uh, global layout. So we are going to add it here. So we have our app header here. Now just below the app header, we can add if app store dot loading. And as you can see here, the app store is already injected here. So we can use this app dot loading and we can access that loading state here. And within that, we can actually add the mat progress bar. Okay. So let's add the mat progress bar here. Great. Now we need to position this in a way that it does not alter the layout of the page. Okay. So we want to make it absolutely positioned. So what we're going to do is we're going to add an absolute class. Since we're using Tailwind, I'm going to use Tailwind CSS classes throughout. So, and now this absolute means that it's going to make it position absolute. And we need this because we need to use the important modifier because this mat progress bar by default has a position relative applied to it. So we want to override that. And then we need a top 64 pixels because we want to make it lower than the toolbar. And that's the height of the toolbar. And then we also need to make the Z index a bit more so that it comes on top of everything. Okay. And of course the mat progress bar had different states. So we need to make the mode indeterminate indeterminate because this is just for general operations which you don't actually know when it's going to end okay okay so let's also load this and we can load this here like this mat progress let's import this from angular material here great 
Okay, but how do we test this in our uh, dashboard? Uh, we have a content section here where we are loading some videos here from an API call. So let's add this global loader there and test it out whether it works fine. Okay, so we are going to go in our videos component here. And there is a very simple implementation in component implementation of the video section here. So I'm not going to change an implementation at this point. I'm just going to show you how to add a loading indicator and how to trigger that loading indicator. So we have our app store injected here. And here what we're going to do is we're going to do app store dot start loading at the start of the API call here. And then here when we get the response here, we can do app store dot stop loading here. So now when we go on posts and we come back to videos you can see that we have a loading indicator here now to see this more clearly because the api call is a bit too fast we have slow 4g here to test this out so when we go in posts nothing happens when you go in videos you can see that you get this nice indicator here and also this can be used anywhere throughout your app wherever you need it to show your user whether your app is working or not okay great but there's one critical element that we are missing here okay now since all of our routes here are lazy loaded there is also a delay while fetching this these lazy loaded routes and maybe also when uh, calculating the guards and everything so there is a process that happens when we uh, change our routes so that that should also show the loading indicator because something is happening and if you don't do that there might be delays which the user might see and the user is not clear about what is actually happening so how to handle router events now to handle router events the traditional way is to go in my app component which is my root component here i already have router injected here so what we need to do here is that we need to do ng on in it and in ng on in it we want to do this dot router dot events and the traditional way would be to do a subscription explicit subscription here and then we can listen to the navigation start and the navigation end and start and stop the loader based on that okay but what we're going to do is we are going to use another way because we have ngri signal store we can actually use a way in which we don't have to explicitly subscribe because subscribing explicitly in our component is sort of a bad practice now because it means that we'll have to also unsubscribe code and it opens your app up to unexpected errors okay so in order to promote that ngrx signals is that it provides an rx method for that purpose okay so let's go in our app.store and this is a normal method which we can declare like this but there is also an rx method that we can declare so we're going to declare an IRX method and we're going to call this loader on navigation because it's going to show the loaders on navigation. Now an RX method is imported from ngrx signals rxjs interop and we're going to give any here because we can send in the router.events observable. Now this is the great thing about the RX method that you can actually send in an observable to the RX method as well. And this means that whenever that observable emits a new value, it's going to trigger that function so it's all automatic we don't have to subscribe to that so let's uh, declare an rx method here and we give a pipe inside of this which comes from rxjs and then within the pipe we are going to do tap and now what we are sending in the rx method in this is the router.events observable which actually emits an event whenever the router is working so in this event parameter and we can also import this from rxjs here so in this event parameter, what we're going to do is that we are going to check what is the instance of this. So we're going to check whether it's an instance of navigation start. Now, so when it's an instance of navigation start, we are going to simply do path state store loading is true. All right. Okay. So it's going to path state loading is true and else if, and then when it's an instance of navigation end, or we can also do instance of navigation error because we can also have a navigation error we can do path state and store and loading is false okay so so whenever the navigation starts it's going to start the loader and whenever the navigation ends it's going to end the loader and in between the navigation start and end there are steps where the angular router is basically lazy loading fetching the new route sort of evaluating guards and doing a lot of other stuff so those events we don't care about we only care about the start and the end because we want the user to know when angular router is working behind the scenes okay this is going to cover everything all right so we have loader on navigation and now we need to bind the loader on navigation with the router dot events observable and we can do that by using a with hooks section which is there in ngri signal store so so with hooks and it's going to store um, use the store and it's going to inject the router and then on init, it's going to link it up with the router.events. 
Now, whenever the events observable is going to fire or is going to emit an event, it's going to call this total loader on navigation automatically so we don't have to explicitly subscribe. Great. So, to test this out, we're going to load this and we're going to do no throttling initially, but then we're going to do slow 4G here so that we can see whether changing the routes actually triggers the loader here as well. So, let's go to post and you can see that there is until the time when it fetches and you can see it fetches the lazy loaded route here so all of our routes are lazy loaded in uh, this angular dashboard for performance reasons okay so now you can see the dashboard is taking a bit of time because it has some more content so you can see that there was a loader to highlight the user that the dashboard is loading okay so our global loading indicator the progress bar looks really good here and it's enough functionality for our needs we can trigger it anywhere anytime we want and it's linked to the navigation event so this is a great for most apps okay but we still have to do some small loading local indicators using the material progress spinner an example you can see here so you can see that the widget data is loading and so we have a loading indicator there there needs to be something because a lot of apps need this small loading indicator in different places to give a responsive feel to your angular app okay so i have added this to the dashboard and i've done that by using a reusable component let's discuss how we did that since we're talking about angular material i wanted to really showcase here my angular material dashboard which if you are look out for an angular material good starter template you're most welcome to try this out and see whether it fits your needs so it is in the latest angular version 19 and it has a login screen like this and you can log in it's integrated by default with firebase but you can use other serverless providers or other auth, auth providers as well and you can see that we have this nice looking dashboard now the great thing about the dashboard is that we can actually move things around on the dashboard and we can also go into edit mode here and we can also change the width and the sizes of this okay so we can make this width larger you can see according to your own specification your own liking so this is something different about my widget and you can also actually just remove this if you'd like to you can keep this inside of it and you can actually remove this widget or you can again and you can see that everything animates nicely Besides that, this dashboard also has the dark mode and the light mode. You can log out from this user. And it also has Tailwind CSS integrated in it. And we are also testing it out with Angular Material Components here. So you can see that all of the Material Components are going to work out of the box. Okay. So if you're on the lookout for a good starter template with Angular Material, be sure to check this out. The link will be in the description. It's available on my Angular shop. And if you get this at this price point, you are also going to get all of the future updates that I'm going to be making to this starter template to make it a really killer starter template for Angular Material. Okay, so now let's get back to the video. Okay, so let's add a local spinner here to see exactly how we can do this. So this channel analytics widget is basically a custom widget that we have. So we have the content of the channel analytics widget here and we have a canvas where we are showing the chart.js graph that you can see. Let's first add a very simple state here. So we're going to do loading is equals to signal false. And then in ng on it, we are going to set this loading to true initially. And we're going to add a timeout of two seconds. Uh, and we're going to set it to false, okay, just to test things out. So how do we add the mat progress spinner here? So let's first import this here. So mat progress spinner here. And here we're going to then add an if condition here. So we're going to add if it's loading, we're going to add a mat progress spinner here okay and then in the else case we are going to show our canvas which is going to show our chart.js graph okay now this progress spinner is going to show on the by default is going to show on the left and then the top right so we want to position this in a better way so but first also let's make the mode as indeterminate and let's make the diameter as not 50 but 40 i guess which is more suitable to the size of the widget uh, and then we want to make this position somewhat better. So we want to make this absolutely positioned. And to make it positioned in the center, we want to make the top as 50% or half. Okay. And we want to make the left as 50% and the half as well. And then we also want to translate it by 50% of the size of the mat progress spinner so that it becomes truly in the middle. Okay. So this is sort of a CSS trick. And so let's do translate. So it sort of auto completed it for me. But what we need to do is we need to shift it on the left side 50%. And on the x axis and on the y, we want to shift it to the top. That means minus translate 50% as well. Okay. And then we also need to make this div here, the containing div or the container, as position relative so that 
this absolute positioning is actually in relative to this container okay and let's refresh this and you can now see that we have a nice loading indicator in the center of this container okay but what if we need it in multiple places we will have to use the same code here the if condition and add this mat progress spinner with all of this configuration uh, again and again so it's worthwhile to actually make a reusable loading container component and i have done that exactly that and let me show you how i have created that so if i go in my shared components here and in the loading container you can see that i've created a loading container component here okay and it has all of the same functionality but i'm using in the else part i'm using ng content which means that you can send in any of the content that you would like to inside of this component and it's going to load that it's going to show that content whenever the loading state is stopped okay and then this loading is basically your loading input here which you can send in from outside and also for added stuff i've also added a size parameter because our container might be small or big and I want to adjust the size, give an option to the user to adjust the size of the spinner based on that container, okay? And you're going to see this utility when we use it for this button, okay? So one more thing, you can see that there's a host styling and we have made it the position relative and display block so that our absolute positioning works as you want it to, okay? So now what we can do is we can use this app loading container wherever we want to add a loading spinner in sort of a small area of the app or in a small widget or something even in a button as you're going to show so in channel analytics now we can remove all of this we can remove all of this and this canvas actually we can put in an app loading container just like this and then we can import this app loading container from our component here we don't need the mat progress spinner here we need to also add our class that was added here so we are going to make this width full and the height as this amount and now you can see that it looks just like it did before and everything works perfectly okay now the great thing about this loading container is that you can use it anywhere so you can use it in other places in your app wherever you want to have a nice looking loading container so we're going to use the same way to actually add this uh, loading container to our button here okay now we can create a global button as well but sort of a wrapper button component as well with the loading state but it's not then going to miss all of the accessibility features and all of the native features that uh, the button component provides so uh, what we're going to do is we're only going to uh, change the content of the button okay and so in the content of the button we can add the same loading container and we can give login inside of the content here and let's import this and this loading container then the loading part is going to then be the app store dot loading state of the application store and one more thing we also want to disable the button here so we're also going to add a disable property here with the same thing okay app store dot loading here great so let's test this out and how this looks so with this we'll have to log out here and then now when we click on login you're going to see that we see that loading indicator again but it's a bit too big so that is exactly why i added a size parameter to it so we can make the size as 20 here as well and so when you make the size 20 here you can see that we have this nice small loading indicator okay we can even make it slower so that you can see this more clearly so let's make it slow 4g and now you can see that there is a nice button loader and the button is disabled as well which means that uh, the user cannot do multiple clicks before the uh, previous loading operation has completed okay great so these were three levels of loading containers that I showed you here and uh, two of them we can we covered by using a reusable container component and the first one which was a global mat progress bar so we actually are only doing it in one place so we actually don't need to make it reusable it's not going to be a big problem if you want to change it in the future okay so let me know what you think and how you use um, loading spinners in your own angular material apps or any angular apps if you like this video be sure to hit the like button and also uh, be sure to subscribe uh, to the channel and share it with others so that more people can learn about angular and we can build real cool apps with it okay so thanks for watching and in the in the future videos i'm going to add more cool features to this dashboard so stay tuned